The first advantage to mention is that as an institution, the USCM is a very experienced fighting force. Yes, the platoon that arrives on LV-426 in Aliens is quite green, but through the course of Aliens history, the USCM could not be more battle-tested. They fight on worlds across space in a variety of different environments and against an assortment of different enemies. We know that they have fought on at least two dozen worlds from the barren BG-386 to the environmentally diverse LV-1201. The USCM's extensive experience endows them centrally with a vast knowledge of space and how to approach and adapt to certain worlds and enemies. This makes them incredibly adept at force projection and being able to maintain territories far from Earth. They would also have a significant advantage over many other space forces if thrown into an unknown environment. The next advantage we have to cover is technological prowess. Now we will get into some specifics later, but we need to dedicate an entire advantage here to their general tech. Because for whatever they lack in terms of the abilities of their soldiers, they definitely make up for in technology. They outdo most other space marine forces in terms of variety and access to tech. We are talking they have all sorts of aircrafts, dropships, escape vehicles, speeders, exoskeletons, tanks, armored vehicles, turrets, radiological weapons, directed energy weapons, flamethrowers, sentry guns, anti-tank weapons, mortars, grenade launchers, rail guns, machine guns, gun guns, infrared tech, jetpacks, parafoils, environmental suits, and more. In every way, the Colonial Marines are a bro force with a military industrial complex only compounded by a mega corporation in Wayland Utani that feeds the USCM's thirst for weapons and technology. Speaking of technology, the next advantage we have to discuss is air support. In Starship Troopers, the United Citizen Federation fleet is separate from the mobile infantry, and it's easy to see how this creates tensions and differences between the two arms of the Terran Federation armed forces. The Colonial Marines, on the other hand, have their own aerospace wing. They have ships and pilots who make up part of their platoons, and thus are able to work in much closer coordination with the soldiers on the ground. The mainstays of the USCM Aerospace Wing are the Conestoga-class transport ship, a la the USS Sulaco, and the UD-4L Cheyenne dropships, which the Conestogas transport. This giant floating gun is nothing more really than humanity's metallic phallus penetrating the space-time fabric to dominate lesser species across the universe. Conestoga-class ships can carry 90 crew and up to 2,000 troops in hypersleep capsules allowing for massive troop deployments to the far reaches of space. And while the Corvette transport ship in Starship Troopers is weakly defended and offensively inept, the Conestoga is armed with eight anti-satellite missiles, twin 800 megavolt particle beams, twin rail guns in its dorsal and ventral turrets, 60 orbital mines, and twin 80 megawatt infrared lasers. The Conestoga class also employs a Romberg Rockwell Cygnus V Tachyon Shunt Hyperdrive. And for you physics people out there, the word tachyon should let you know that this ship can travel faster than the speed of light if needed. The UD-4L dropship, on the other hand, transports our next advantage, armored personal carriers, specifically the M577, a troop transport vehicle. The M577 consists of a titanium hull lined inside with boron carbide ceramic tiles, each of which has been coated with a polymer resin to prevent cracks or shattering. The M577 isn't necessarily suitable fortification against anti-tank weapons, but it works as solid, though not impenetrable reinforcement against xenomorphs. On the inside, the M577 is a tactical operations center, allowing colonial marines to plan and monitor the battlefield on the move. They have all sorts of imaging and radar technology at their disposal, allowing them to track targets up to 3,000 meters away in open terrain. More importantly, the M577 is offensively dynamic, boasting two Gatling guns, two phased plasma cannons, and an automatic light mortar. The next advantage is powered exoskeletons. Yes, last time around I criticized the P5000 powered workloader for being no better than a standard forklift. But Wayland yutani and the USCM learned their lessons from the P-5000's lackings. The exosuit, for instance, is a militarized version of the P-5000 powered workloader designed for heavy combat use. Then of course there's the Berserker, a combat cyborg developed specifically for xenomorph clearing operations. A Berserker unit is heavily armed and armored and is operated by a human who is sealed inside and neurologically connected to the suit's control systems. 
When not in operation, the human operators are kept in medically induced comas, and then during missions, they are fed with a potent cocktail of stimulant drugs that turns them hyper-aggressive against aliens. For that last part, imagine something along the lines of Stan Lee before he died, except replace aliens with nurses. The Berserker was born in response to thousands of USCM casualties at the hands of aliens in single battles. Berserkers are armed with pulse rifles, grenade launchers, and flamethrowers, and have acid-resistant armor to protect against xenomorph blood. The next advantage we have to mention is the M314 motion tracker we see the USCM using so often. The motion tracker is a high-powered ultrasound scanner that uses Doppler shift discrimination to filter out moving objects from stationary background and then displays them on the tracker's monitor as a series of shapes of probable locations of objects. Motion trackers allow the Colonial Marines to monitor perimeters and stay alert of any impending attacks. The trackers are able to scan through objects as well, meaning one can track targets from inside of buildings or vehicles though its range is limited by obstructions. The next advantage is synthetic humans. Last video we criticized the USCM for underusing droids. But that's only because they have a huge potential as an advantage, as long as they're not allowed to gather in mass and rebel. As we see, synthetics are much smarter and stronger than humans, and are thus highly valuable commodities to marine platoons. One major advantage of synthetics is that they are far more adaptable than humans to different environments, and can function at a high level even given a lack of a breathable atmosphere. And they are also immune to xenomorph aggression most of the time, meaning they can move around an area swarming with aliens while the marines are stuck in hiding. Synthetics make the Colonial Marine Platoon smarter and more capable. Next up we have the M41A Pulse Rifle. The standard guns in Starship Troopers do little to grant the mobile infantry a significant advantage over the arachnids. The soldiers waste ammo on the bugs, but unless they hit them in the nerve stem, the bugs don't go down easily. The same cannot be said for the Colonial Marines guns, especially the M41A. The weapon's steel-jacketed explosive-tipped rounds take down the aliens pretty quickly. That might have more to do with the Xenomorph's defenses, but having the appropriate weapons for the enemy one is facing is a plus. Additionally, while the USCM does wield some unnecessary bulky and heavy guns like the M56 smart gun, the M41A is efficiently sized and is constructed from an ultra-light alloy. The weapon weighs in at 10.8 pounds, or pizza kilograms, when fully loaded and with a sling. This is in line with modern-day US Marine rifles, despite the M41A mounting an under-barrel grenade launcher. The next advantage we have to talk about is armor. Yes, the M3 pattern personal armor is crap, but the Marines wearing it against Xenomorphs didn't know what they were getting into on LV-426. The M4X armor appearing in the video game Aliens vs. Predator Extinction is an advanced body armor system upgrade from the M3 vest. M4X armor provides better protection against high velocity impact than the M3 armor, but sacrifices almost nothing in terms of mobility, obviously a plus when holding up against Xenomorph strikes. The M4X provides full body protection including armored sleeves, thick gloves, and a full face helmet that contains a light ballistics resistant visor. The lightweight armor helps the Marine maintain his balance when absorbing alien body blows, and even has light resistance to xenomorph acid blood. Of course, in terms of anti-acid armor, there's also the ape suit, used mostly by Wayland yutani personnel and Colonial Marine flamethrower units. The ape suit fully protects its wearer from the burn of xenomorph blood. Our last advantage to talk about is the combat fitness of Colonial Marines. Yes, even if the USCM is experienced as an institution, sometimes individual Marines have lacked experience when going into the field of battle, especially when first facing off against the Xenomorphs. But what definitely could not be said about any of them is that they are not fit for combat. The Starship Troopers Mobile Infantry has a volunteer army that compels people who want to be citizens to join, and thus we end up with a lot of unfit soldiers. The USCM's Marines, on the other hand, are all pretty much killers at heart and are ready for the horrors of war. They are born to be on the battlefield, and that is very important in terms of dealing with the enemy. They don't hesitate to kill, and aside from Private Hudson, are able to cope with the possibility of death, and even Hudson goes down in valiant form. 
In general, such combat fitness means that unlike the Starship Troopers mobile infantry, Colonial Marines aren't just alien bait. They can hold their own, and while you might see high casualties, especially when undermanned, the USCM is unlikely to face the kind of devastation the mobile infantry did when they lost over 300,000 soldiers in the Battle of Klondathu. Okay, maggots, it's time. Cast your final vote for the Colonial Marines by clicking in the top corner. Upcoming, Alan still has another video on the UNSC from Halo, and my next video will cover the most noble fighting force of all, a force that faces off against the most evil aliens to ever exist. Once again, never forget the heroic peoples who have perished across the universe fighting aliens, men and women who died protecting freedom and collecting useful territories. We fight on for them, my brethren, and for Argentina. I'll catch you next time. Generation Films, dismissed.